Okay, so this is the last part of chapter 46, which is renal problems, and we're going to go through urinary incontinence, the types, and then catheterization. Um, basically, urinary incontinence um, is when we have so much pressure in the bladder that um, it overtakes our muscles that control bladder function. Now, remember that we have skeletal muscles and smooth muscles. Both of them make up uh, one of the sphincters, sphincters. You have internal and external. The external one you can control. The internal one you cannot. Um, so the pressure is all pushed down on that skeletal muscle sphincter, which is your external sphincter. And when that pressure exceeds uh, the muscle's ability to withhold it, you have incontinence. Now, incontinence can be caused by an issue with the bladder or an issue um, with your central nervous system or an issue with the muscle or um, the amount of pressure building up. So there's lots of factors, but bottom line is the pressure exceeds the muscle's capability to withhold it, okay? Um, so... Um, they have this drib, oh, nice. uh, <laughs> drib for the um, different types of ways that, or different types of things that can cause urinary incontinence. And this was depression, I'm not sure, but anyway, delirium, um, oh, residual buildup, you see here, residual buildup, I'm missing one there, buildup. Oh, uh, dehydration, um, restricted mobility here, so restricted mobility, uh, bed confinement, uh, renal impaction, oh, renal impaction, impaction on the, the um, urinary tract, infection, inflammation, And polyuria and poly oops, poly sparm, let's see, or essentially tons of mice. Alright, so these are some of the things that you can cause urinary incontinence. And it's just something um, that they use in little acronym they used to remember um, the factors. Alright, so anyways, drugs um drugs that can affect or treat um, urinary incontinence. So some of these drugs may be inadvertently taken. Um, for instance, calcium channel, calcium channel blockers, which um, you're going to use for the heart, but it has systemic effects in the fact that it's going to reduce um, or relax your skeletal muscles that control your urinary, um, well, or your urinary excretion. So when you have things like depressants or stimulants that control the muscles, well, it's going to have an effect on the bladder. Um, now, some of this might be that it cause, causes incontinence, or we might use it to treat it. But bottom line is, is that the drugs that are, are related to this are going to either cause um, urethra. So it's either going to affect the urethra directly, or it's going to affect the retention, or it's going to affect the muscles involved. All right, so we have androgen blockers, we have calcium channel blockers, we have ant, um, anticholinergic, which have to do with retention, we have uh, diuretics, which are going to prevent retention, we have muscle relaxers, muscle stimulants, um, calcium channel blockers, androgen, block, um, androgen blockers, um, of course alcohol is going to prevent retention. So um, all the drugs are related back to this in some way or another. It's either going to affect the urethra directly, it's going to affect the muscles or it's going to affect their retention um, one way or another. Um, now women are going to have this more often and in women um, stress and urge incontinence is the most prevalent. In men with incontinence it's usually due to that prostate um, and retention which makes sense of course. Um, so it's predominantly women, and women usually have stress or urge incontinence. Um, so let's go through some of those. Stress incontinence. Stress incontinence is where you have like a sudden urge to go. All of a sudden. I mean, it, you didn't have to urinate, and then all of a sudden it's really, really have to go. And this is going to be caused by um, multiple pregnancies, um, injury, or trauma to um, the muscles. But a lot of times it's going to relate to pregnancies. Um, 
Hmm. It may have to be related to prostate surgery. All right. And um, things that can cause and cause usually a small amount here, just so you know. Um, it can be frequent or infrequent, but a lot of times for women, it's like having coffee, laughing, pick up something heavy, and um, it's just a, a little bit of that dribble factor because um, the muscles are not what they used to be, especially as you get older and you've had multiple pregnancies. Um, lack of estrogen is going to allow those muscles to relax quite a bit more. So that's why that's so predominant in women. Um, so our treatments for these ones are going to be Kegel exercises, which are um, retraining the muscle or training the muscle. Estrogen, like I said, when estrogen starts going away, um, you're going to lose some of that that muscular strength that was there before. Um, and then urethral support, um, and that can be on the bladder neck um, itself, and surgically implanted um, options as well. Um, we also have urge incontinence, which is a big one for women. So this is basically you're urinating prior to even knowing, prior to having any urge. So there's no urge here. So um, absolutely no urge. Uh, urinating prior to urge. Um, again, more, more predominantly women, and this is going to cause larger amounts because you again the urge is after the fact. So it's a large amount of urine at this point, uh, especially in nocturia um, or night, uh, nocturia, nocturnal, urea, urine, so night urine, um, or when you're asleep. This has to do with overactive, overactive detrusor muscles. Now, if you can remember, um, the muscles in the bladder are the detrusor muscles. Muscles in the bladder um, are interlacing smooth muscles, and they go different directions. But this is called overactive um, muscles. So they're not, it's not that they um, atrophy. They, they are actually overactive, so they're going to be overstimulated. And a lot of times this can be caused by a CNS issue. Um, so, you know, if you had an injury to the CNS, or there's some type of miscommunication between the renal system, um, the smooth muscles in the renal system, and uh, the brain. All right. Um, this is also caused um, by injury or trauma, or again anything that disrupts this uh, CNS process or the process from the brain to the, the renal system itself. Um, treatments for this look like anticholinergics, and again that relates back to attention. Um, anticholinergics, estrogen for women, obviously. Uh, bladder and bladder retraining. Bladder retraining can be done with weights, kegels, biofeedback, all types of other stuff. Uh, but bladder retraining. All right, so that is um, stress incontinence is basically where all of a sudden you have uh, tons amount of stress. Urge is complete lack of urge. Um, and then let's go over into you also have functional incontinence, um, incontinence related to trauma. I'm missing one. Refer back to my All right, so other types of incontinence. Um, overflow incontinence. So that means that we have tons of urine building up, and that's going to relate back to um, the residual factor or build up in the residual residual factor. Uh, overflow incontinence is um, is perhaps because something's obstructing the bladder. Um, so maybe it's a kidney stone, maybe it's swelling, inflammation, prostate. Um, but she, bottom line is there's too much fluid, okay? Uh, too much. And the bladder is always descending. Now remember if we uh, palpate, the bladder really shouldn't feel descended or even noticeable, but um, the bladder is always descended in this case. Um, and um, this is an underactive, underactive, the, all right, so in this case, um, we have residual factor that's building up in the, the urine, or I'm sorry, in the bladder. Um, every time that you go, you're not getting all of it out, and that has to do with not having strong enough or inactive muscles in the bladder, um, and uh, the bladder will be descended here. So what we need to do here is, one, get these muscles activated, and two, um, the bladder retraining. So the treatment for this is going to be... Balsava maneuver, um, basically that's where 
you're holding your breath um, while pushing, so trying to empty out that bladder completely. Valsalva maneuver, um, that relates to the muscles. Um, surgery, androgen blockers, and again, that relates to um, uh, androgen blockers. That's back to retention. And All right, um, so that is overflow, basically an overflow of the amount of urine in the bladder. We also have reflex, and this basically means that there's absolutely no reflex. All right, it's, um, there's no stress, no urge, no nothing to go off of. Okay, so this, this is um, completely, we, we have no idea that we have to urinate at all. Of course, it's frequent at this point because we don't know when we have to go. And the amount is going to be moderate to large, of course. Um, your it, it relates back to having an issue with those muscles um, in the bladder. Um, it can also relate back to your CNS or spinal cord issues. So, again, trauma, cancer, um, anything that is disrupting that pathway. Um, the treatment for this is going to be cat. Like catheterization at this point, um, you could try diazepam to relax the sphincter muscles um, or surgery. All right, we also have, um, I'm just going to call it trauma. All right, so in the event that you have some type of trauma um, that has created incontinence for women, a lot of times that's fistulas or again, an open. Uh, a pathway that's not supposed to be there. That can relate back to pregnancies, um, cancer, and radiation, but fistulas is a again opening that should not necessarily be there. Um, so pregnancies, traumas, cancer. Um, mm -mm -mm. Oh, with men, um, this is some type of alteration in incontinence control. So it might be the prostate is enlarged or prostate surgery. Uh, maybe it has to do with some type of ure urethra trauma. Um, either way, it's, there's a change in the ability to hold in urine. And the treatment for this, and this is, I didn't even know this existed, but artificial sphincter. So they can put in artificial sphincter muscles. Um, and of course, you have the surgery option. All right, the last one is functional. Let's see if we can squeeze him in there. Functional. Um, functional relates to the, the, the bladder is completely functioning, um, but this relates to mobility issues, safety issues, um, a lot to do with aging. Um, it's going to be environmental factors. And the obvious treatment for this is fix the uh, environmental factors, get a good size mode, things of that nature. Um, but a lot has to do with age, balance, mobility, and the um, environment. So those are your types of urinary incontinence. Um, but if you can just kind of remember these words, like this is caused by trauma, this is a lack of reflux, um, overflow is obvious, <laughs> um, and then of course you've got, uh, with women you have the urge, um, and stress incontinence, which are predominantly in women, and that really blocks pregnancies. Um, okay, so those are your type of incontinence. Now, um, here we go. So intervention, what else can we do uh, besides just treatment and catheterization and, and things we've already discussed? Um, so we're looking at lifestyle modifications. We're going to look at um, being overweight, um, smoking, because of course smoking is a big constrictor and if um, my muscles are getting all of my blood flow, then they are going to not be as functional. Uh, bowel, bowel issues, so um, the bowel is again right next to the, well, it's all along the bladder and the ureter, um, I'm sorry, the urethra. So if you have some type of bowel impaction, then of course you're going to have a constriction of um, urine. Uh, prostate issues, we need to look at that as well. Um, and then reduce those irritants. Um, that, that relates back to spicy foods, peppermint, things like that. Things that um, I have to take the bladder line. Um, I either fluid increase or decrease, depending on how you are in fluids. Um, scheduled voiding, that's going to be important, so that's where we're going, okay, every hour, well, on the hour, we're going to go sit down and we're going to do schedule voiding. So whatever that looks like, there's tons of different ways to, to structure that, but bottom line, you're on some type of timeline. Um, pelvic floor muscles, 
Um, so if we can fix that, again, that's Kegel exercise. It can be biofeedback. Biofeedback is where um, you're getting an idea of, um, it's almost like retraining to learn how to use your muscles, but you have, um, you have some feedback, like this muscle does this. Um, for working out, we relate to biofeedback through the mirror, but it can also come in electrical forms um, for people that can no longer control their muscles. So uh, biofeedback is another way. Um, weighted exercises, um, and that's for women only. Uh, weighted exercises um, to try and regain control of those muscles. Um, and then you have electrical stimulation. Um, you of course have the anti-incontinence. Um, that's the bladder support, which I think is bladder support, which I thought was crazy. Um, I had no idea you could do any type of bladder support, but this is like structural support. Um, you know, padding inserted, surgically inserted necks and things of that nature to support the bladder inside. Um, and urethra plugs. That was another one. Urethra plugs. This is a plug where they put this in the urethra. And uh, you know, every hour or so, you're you're emptying it. Um, same thing goes for males, um, and that's pressure um, applied to the urethra. And same concept, you you're in control because you're taking meeting that pressure like every hour on the hour. So um, I didn't even know that was possible. Um, <laughs> containment. Um, that's going to refer back to our. Um, to pads, um, catheters, mm -mm, de um, urinary devices, maybe it's going to be um, stoma or uh, redirection surgically. Um, so what's our role as an RN? Um, our role is to identify what type of incontinence they have, assess, identify, come up with a plan, and um, implement that plan. Uh, and of course, patient teaching is going to be important here, so how are they taken care of? Um, the urinary devices, or if it's Kegel, you know, exercise, how, how you perform Kegeling, things of that nature. Okay, so, um, that's your interventions for bladder incontinence. Um, types of catheters. So, just as a reminder, very complete last resort. Um, so it's not just, hey, the person is, is immobile. No, because we can still use, um, adults. I hate the word diapers. Um, Adult, you know, incontinence pads or whatever. Uh, so we catheterization is um, related back to a lot of those uh, hospital acquired illnesses. So we really want to reduce the amount of time that we use a catheter and when we use a catheter. You have an involuntary catheter and then a straight catheter. Um, they refer to it as intermittent um, catheterization. So when do we use involuntary catheters? Involuntary catheters um, are going to stay in. Um, either for a, at least longer, you know, than a couple of hours, um, involuntary catheters are going to, are going to stay in. Um, so it might be anytime you hear surgery and it has to do with some type of renal system, um, or the urethra, that's a pretty good indication at that point that we need an involuntary catheter because nothing can heal, um, if we have urine passing through it constantly, um, especially if it's been you know, surgically done. So anything uh, with the renal system and surgery or your urethra. Um, your other one, um, for, um, oh, critically ill, critically ill INOs. So if they're critically ill during intensive care um, and you need very accurate INOs, you would use them there. Um, the other point is if they are completely disabled, they can't move maybe, um, uh, Complete destabilization, so the point where we can't use the adults' um, underwear anymore. Um, completely disabled. Uh, and then you have stage three and yeah, four pressure ulcers. So if we have pressure ulcers that are directly affected by the incontinence, then we can use there as well. Um, or terminally ill is the last one. Terminally ill uh, patients that that are impaired right, or severely impaired. All right, so critically ill, um, I know it's completely stable, three, four pressure ulcers that are directly related to the incontinence, and then terminally ill patients. The intermittent is we're going to put it in, we're going to you know get get the urine, then we're going to get it out. Intermittent, um, we did spit cath. <laughs> 
mitten or thread cap. Um, so if you need a sterile sample and you can't get it any other way, um, maybe uh, pre, um, not post op. Um, all right, before surgery, I can't think right now. Before surgery, all right, if you need an empty bladder, um, if we're going to deliver meds into the bladder. For whatever reason, that's not coming to my head right now. But anyways, before surgery, um, sterile samples, meds to bladder. Um, and then if we need to measure the residual urine, so if we're, we're saying, hey, um, their bladder is still distended and we want to figure out how much urine is in there, then we could use that to grab the residual urine, which obviously would not be residual if they were really going to do that. Um, so that's what we need to use it. Different types of catheters. Of course, we're familiar to your urethra catheters. Um, they might be a common castrate cath um, in dwelling, but urethral, um, they're going to somehow fixate or go into the urethra. Um, we have um, suprapubital, and that's going above the uh, pubis, I believe it's actually. Pubis. All right, that's going to go above the uh, pubic bone. That's going to be surgically um, instilled through the wall. And you also have ureter, all right, so as the name might suggest, you're going into the ureter. Um, and this can go through on a cystoscope or through the wall of the um, wall of the bladder. It's going directly in. Uh, nephros, uh, if it's going through uh, nephrogeny. That's going directly into the renal um, pelvis, the renal pelvis, all right, renal pelvis. All right, so it's bypassing all the ureter and everything else. So if we have a push issue with the ureter and the bladder or the urethra, um, then it's going directly into the back, um, the, the real renal pelvis, um, directly into the kidney. And that's not used very much. But, of course, if we have a ureter problem, that might be an option. Okay, so those are the different types of um, different types of catheters, um, or where you would see them, and then when you would use a uh, instrument or indwelling catheter. All right, and that's going to sum up incontinence.